Welcome back to Unit 5. We have now discussed everything in the larger iceberg on the screen, and we're going to focus on the two smaller icebergs that represent our altered states of consciousness. First up, really brief iceberg, we're going to talk about meditation and hypnosis. So meditation and hypnosis, we've often wondered what's happening when you're meditating. Are you conscious? Are you falling unconscious? What's going on? Well, through really focused, mindful meditation, we know that what's happening is you're changing your brain waves. Somebody can actually move from beta waves down to Elta and really sophisticated meditators can actually move into theta waves. Although we often think about theta waves as being something that occurs when you're asleep, we can actually find they do it while they're awake and while they're mindful. We can also see that they can have control over their sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve systems. They can actually slow down their heart rate and slow down their breathing. Very advanced Buddhist monks, for instance, have been capable of slowing down their breathing to such a level that our first responders have said, well, this person always feels like they're in a coma, but they have control and can bring themselves back. Now, aside from that really intensive meditation, let's just think about everyday meditation, moving from our gamma and beta waves down to the nice relaxed alpha waves is what most of us might be able to handle, especially, again, this is not sponsored, but if you are doing something like this using the Muse 2 headband for mindful meditation practice, it can actually help to lower your stress level. Because you're moving from those gamma and beta waves down to your alpha waves, it can reduce your stress and improve your health. Just from doing 10 minutes of mindful meditation a day can actually activate your left prefrontal cortex more and deactivate your right prefrontal cortex more, which makes you feel more empathetic towards others and more compassionate towards others. That if everyone were to have a meditation session before they go to court or before they go to a diplomacy hearing, the negotiations would probably go a lot easier. We also know that individuals who meditate more often tend to show heightened levels of creativity and their ability to solve problems is greater. And finally, because of this switch in brain waves, there have been studies done on pain tolerance and meditation and the idea that someone can undergo surgery while they are meditating without the use of anesthesia. Very controversial area, but there are some studies showing that the brain waves change and someone's pain tolerance and sensitivity to pain can actually be dysregulated during meditation. So there is something very special going on there. And then with hypnosis, is hypnosis the same as meditation? Well, it's hard to say. So the story of hypnosis is quite complex. Going back to the 1800s, you may be familiar with names such as P.T. Barnum. Uh, and it's the idea that individuals that were really interested in spiritism and the age of William James, seance tables, tarot card readings, what have you, they really get hooked into hypnosis. And there was an individual by the last name of Mesmer. This is why we have the term mesmerized. He believed he could mesmerize people and hypnotize them. He was later disproven as a con artist and there was no science behind what he was doing. But then Freud and lots of psychoanalysts used hypnosis and it's become, remained very controversial in psychology. Still to this day, if you look at intro psych books, some books will discredit hypnosis as fraud and an illusion. Some books will remark that there is some instances of differences in brain activity. Much like what we were just talking about with meditation, there have been some studies that have actually shown that if you hypnotize someone, they will have a higher tolerance to pain during surgery. And there's been some uh, patterns shown that the brain waves might change. So what exactly is hypnosis? Is it always fraud? Is it always just role playing? Or is there something real going on there? Can you take control of someone? Well, most middle of the road cognitive psychologists today say that hypnosis is a type of altered consciousness where you are at a heightened risk for suggestibility. That being said, you'll never do things that you wouldn't have done otherwise. So this is the idea that you are relaxed, your brain waves have changed, and if somebody suggests something to you, you're more likely to do it, but you're not going to do things that you wouldn't ethically be okay with otherwise. And so because of this, uh, are you able to get repressed memories? Can you look at past lives if you're hypnotized? There's been no scientific evidence for either one of those suggestions. But hypnosis remains in the literature of psychology as this altered state of consciousness where you're relaxed, where you focus on one thing, and this provides a heightened sense of suggestibility where you'll do things, but you wouldn't otherwise do them if you were uncomfortable with it.